Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're diving into a story that's a mix of environmental activism, corporate greed, and, believe it or not, some really ridiculous moments. Get ready as we uncover the epic tale of Kensaro Wiwa and the Ogoni people. It's going to be a wild ride, so buckle up. All right, let's set the scene. Imagine the late 1950s in Nigeria, lush green landscapes, a vibrant culture, and the Ogoni people living peacefully along the banks of the river Niger. Life is good. The biggest problem is deciding who gets the last piece of jollof rice at family gatherings. But wait, here comes Shell Petroleum, and they have a different idea of progress. Spoiler alert, it's not what the Ogoni people had in mind. When Shell rolls into town, it's like your neighbor throwing a party without telling you. And when you peek outside, you see they're tearing up your garden to set up a giant oil rig. They start drilling, and you'd think this means prosperity, right? Wrong. Instead of a booming economy, the Ogoni people end up with rivers so polluted they look like a science experiment gone wrong. It's like finding out your rich uncle is throwing a massive party in your backyard, but serving you a buffet of toxins. Imagine the horror. Your home is transformed from a paradise to a wasteland, and the Nigerian government? They're all in, cashing checks while the Ogoni people are left holding the bag. Or should I say, the oil-soaked rags. And this is where our hero, Ken Saro Wiwa, steps in. Ken wasn't about to sit back and let the oil tycoons and government officials waltz in and ruin everything. He saw the damage, the despair, and said, no more. He founded the movement for the survival of the Ogoni people, or Mosop. Imagine a group of villagers suddenly realizing they have the power to stand up against a giant. Cue the epic music. Ken wasn't just an activist, he was a wordsmith. With his eloquent writing and charismatic speeches, he rallied the Ogoni people. They organized protests demanding justice, clean land, and an end to Shell's harmful practices. Think of them as the Avengers of the Niger Delta, fighting to protect their home. But as you can imagine, the battle wasn't easy. The Nigerian government was not about to let a bunch of villagers ruin their oil money party. They clamped down hard, and things got serious. Ken and his fellow activists faced intimidation, arrests, and violence. It was like a high-stakes game of Survivor, but without the tropical vacation vibe. In the 1990s, tensions reached a boiling point. In 1993, after a peaceful protest, Shell's facilities were sabotaged, and the Nigerian government went into overdrive blaming the Ogoni activists. Ken Saro Wiwa and others were arrested, and they faced charges of murder related to the unrest. Talk about a plot twist. A group fighting for their rights suddenly finds themselves on trial, as if they were the villains in this story. Ken was tried in a sham trial that lasted just a few days. His defense? Well, let's just say it was like bringing a spoon to a knife fight. The verdict was already predetermined. In 1995, Ken Sarawiwa was executed, along with eight other Ogoni leaders. It was a shocking moment that echoed around the world, but Ken's spirit? That lived on. And this brings us to our book of the day, A Month and a Day in Letters. This memoir isn't just about Ken's personal struggles. It's a powerful chronicle of the Ogoni people's fight against oppression and environmental devastation. It's filled with wit, passion, and a fierce love for his homeland. Through his sharp prose, Ken reveals the sheer absurdity of the situation, the hypocrisy of a government that turned a blind eye while its citizens suffered, and the greed of corporations treating the land like a buffet they could pick clean. It's a literary punch to the gut, and let me tell you, it's not for the faint of heart. Ken Sarawiwa was more than just a writer. He was an activist who bravely stood up against the giants of his time. His quote, writers must not merely write to amuse, they must play an interventionist role, perfectly encapsulates his mission. He believed that literature must serve society and intervene in the political arena. His legacy? It's a call to action for anyone who cares about justice, human rights, and the environment. Though Ken was taken from us, his words and fight for justice live on. His story is not just about the Ogoni people, but a universal struggle against oppression and the fight for our planet. 
if you want to understand the true cost of capitalism and the fight for environmental justice. This book is a must read. If you found this story as powerful as I did, give this video a thumbs up subscribe for more content and share your thoughts in the comments below. Have you read Ken Sarawiwa's work? What do you think about the Ogoni struggle? Let's keep the conversation going. Until next time, keep reading and stay curious.